Okay, last gland, finally. So, okay, the pancreas is a foregut organ. Remember that's found in the curvature of the duodenum and then goes over towards the left side of the body towards the spleen and the left kidney, okay? The pancreas has an exocrine and an endocrine function. Remember, its exocrine function is for digestion. Its endocrine function is it makes hormones, okay? That's why it's an endocrine gland. The pancreas is gonna make two hormones. It actually makes more, but we're just gonna learn two, okay? One of those hormones comes from alpha cells and one comes from beta cells. The beta cells make insulin. The alpha cells, they make glucagon. Okay. Both of these help us regulate blood sugar levels. This is the only hormone that helps us regulate blood sugar levels. What that means is they, they target specific parts of the body to make sure blood sugar levels remain normal. Nothing else does, just these two hormones, okay? Remember, increasing or decreasing blood sugar levels is a stimulus. It's a stimulus. So like when we say that the thyroid gland increases sugar levels, uh, or that the adrenal gland increases sugar levels, remember this is a byproduct of creating sugar and adding that sugar into blood. So it becomes a stimulus for insulin or glucagon, okay? So you're gonna have two homeostatic mechanisms that you need to understand. Two different scenarios. In say scenario one here, we're gonna eat a meal. You eat a meal or you eat a whole bunch of donuts and what's gonna happen, okay? There's a number of different ways that you can do this in terms of a homeostatic feedback mechanism. You should do whatever whatever is best for you, what is easiest for you. So we're gonna start with a stimulus as eating a meal. What this is essentially going to do is it's going to increase our blood sugar levels. Beyond the 100 milligrams per milliliter. Okay. That increasing blood sugar levels is sent to the pancreas. In this case, the pancreas is both the receptor and the control center. So those blood sugar levels get sent to the pancreas. The pancreas makes a determination about whether or not blood sugar levels are met. And if blood sugar levels are too high, essentially what it's going to do is it's going to tell the beta cells to release insulin. So after every meal you eat, your pancreas releases insulin. Insulin is going to target two places, okay? One is body cells. So just normal body cells. Any cell, neurons, anything like that, okay? And essentially what body cells do is they absorb sugar. Uh, sorry, my thing down there is getting in the way. Too close to the bottom here. I'll write it over on the other side. All right, so just think about sugar goes inside of the body cells. The other thing it's gonna target is the liver. Whoa. When you target the liver, the liver also absorbs sugar. So we're gonna see that glucose goes into the liver and basically the liver makes glycogen. Okay. These two things combined together are going to essentially cause blood sugar levels to decrease. And as those blood sugar levels decrease, we basically go back to normal blood sugar levels. And when you go back to normal blood sugar levels, the system gets turned off. Uh, 
okay? So we turn off the system. Essentially, you turn off that system, if that helps, just like that, right? Blood sugar levels increase. Pancreas releases insulin from its beta cells. Beta cells, I'm um, sorry, the insulin causes sugar to be absorbed by body cells, thus reducing blood sugar levels. And then if you have any excess glucose, you convert that into glycogen in the liver, again, reducing blood sugar levels. So everything goes back to, to a normal level. So let's say we have scenario two then instead. So in scenario two, you skip a meal. You could skip a meal or the other thing is you could be on like uh, a ketogenic diet where you're not actually eating carbohydrates or sugars. If you're eating proteins and fats, then this doesn't turn on. So your blood sugar levels start to dip, okay? So again, if we skip a meal, essentially what we wanna understand is blood sugar levels. Whoa, sorry, decrease. That gets sent to the pancreas. As it goes to the pancreas, the pancreas makes a determination. It determines, oh, I don't have enough blood sugar. Well, okay, the pancreas doesn't say that, but the pancreas says, oh my gosh, there's not enough blood sugar to run this ship. This ship is your body. So it's gonna tell the alpha cells here to release glucagon. That's an alpha, okay? When they re when glucagon gets released, it has one sole target and that target is the liver. The liver is going to take its glycogen, which is a complex carbohydrate and it converts it into glucose or sugar that sugar goes into the bloodstream. And when it does, it's going to increase blood sugar levels. The levels, as we increase blood sugar levels, right? We turn off the system. I mean, actually I, I could do this. I should maybe erase this here make my homeostatic feedback mechanism a little bit better. Like we target the pancreas and turn the pancreas off. So when blood sugar levels go back up, we turn off the system. That's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. Okay. It's a weird wonky like chart. Okay. But it's, it, it gets, if it gets your point across, it gets your point across. You could put this in steps. Step one, it does this. Step two, it does this. Step three, it does this. Step, you know, but this is actually far easier to write out than anything else. Oh, I forgot something, sorry. I forgot normal blood sugar levels, duh. It's the normal blood sugar levels that turn the system off. I was like, why is my chart so weird? Because I forgot normal blood sugar levels, okay? So again, if you skip a meal and your blood sugar levels drop, the pancreas essentially releases glucagon from beta cells. The glucagon targets the liver so that the liver produces glucose. As glucose goes into the bloodstream, blood sugar levels increase. Once sugar levels are normal, you turn the system off. So this is the homeostatic mechanisms for the pancreas. Hopefully not too, too difficult. I mean, it just takes some kind of like drawing out and thinking about it. Don't just watch, do, okay? Draw it out so you understand how you would draw this out, how you would answer questions about it on an exam.